Good evening, everybody. Uh, once again, thank you for being here, whether you're in here in person or joining us on Facebook. Uh, before we get started, there, there is an announcement I want to remind everybody of. <clears throat> for those who are local here, this Saturday, um, the, the church will be hosting a um, LBY wash party or a dinner party. Uh, basically, LBY again is going to uh, have their one-day uh, retreat. <clears throat> Basically, it's going to be um, a message involved, but also a time of fellowship as well. So it will start at 6 o'clock at night and should run to about 8 o'clock-ish, so give or take a little over two hours. So please, if you don't have anything to do or if you don't have any plans, please join, please join us here. So we will have people from um, Amy Baptist Church joining us as well. So more than likely we'll be... <clears throat> um, We'll be in the kitchen to uh, to um, <clears throat> be a part of that event. So again, this upcoming Saturday at six o'clock at night, uh, the LBY um, dinner, uh, luncheon, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, it's a virtual luncheon, as they call it. So, but yeah, uh, please make time to come. We'll f we'll fellowship and just enjoy each other's company. And so, um, but yeah, with that being said, um, another announcement. Um, for those in here in person and those who are online, please make comments because we are celebrating the birthday today. And he will be speaking um, today. Brother Chen will be speaking. So wish him a happy birthday. So um, we celebrate you, brother, and we praise God for you. And thank you for um, letting God use you as a vessel. And happy birthday to you. So with that being said, um, I will give it up to the worship band. Everyone, please stand up for praise and worship. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. darkness my god that is who you are 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 you are here touching every heart i worship you worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you that is who you are. 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 You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you.
co-work I promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are 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 Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to. The altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Be behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling oh, Come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. What a Savior, isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Please close their head, bow their heads and close their eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for bringing us all here today to praise and worship you. And I pray for the people who couldn't make it or are watching through the live stream. I also pray for Brother Chance as he gives the message. And I pray that you speak through him and that we keep his message with us and use it through our daily lives. I thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Good, mess uh, good music. All right. About the comment thing, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not important, you know. What's a little year older, you know, so don't worry about those comments. Comment on something more godly, okay? So, uh, well, welcome again uh, to our service and welcome to those out there that's streaming in. Uh, before we get to the message, let's pray and I'm going to need all the, the help that, that I can muster, um, and please pray for me. So, dear Father God, Father God, thank you so much for today. Father, thank you for giving me an opportunity, Father, to come and share in your word, Father, so that people can take to heart what it's like to be humble, 
to follow in your example, the best example um, that we could follow. Father, Father, thank you so much for giving me one more year to be alive, to be blessed, to, to serve you, Father. Father, I praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I put this slide up there, and I titled this Attitude. And our attitude, just like a diamond, has many facets, has many dimensions, right? And if you look at a, a diamond, a diamond in itself does not shine. It doesn't. The diamonds get their brilliant uh, glare and, and, and clarity and, and shine from basically four things. And one of the four things, if you think about it, is reflection, refraction, dispersion, and what's called facets or cuts of that diamond, right? So reflection, it's, it's, it's like, you know, when you shine a light at a glass and that light bounces back at you on the surface, that is called reflection. Now, reflection is nice and all, but it doesn't go into the, the way that describes how diamonds really shine. So when you shine a light at a diamond, some of the light, like I said, reflects out and hits you. But some of the light goes deep into the diamond itself, and this light shatters. It fractionates. And then this light this process is, is, is called refraction, okay? And so as the light is going through the diamond, it's breaking apart, it's fractionated, and then it's then angled in certain um, dimensions of this prism, if you could, and then it then goes back up, out, and hits the viewer. That's called dispersion. It's the way that light goes back up. And even that, what makes a diamond really, really shine? It's what's called the facet, the way it's cut. And a diamond, if it's cut very symmetry or symmetrical, even on all edges, that brings that light into view. And even though if the diamond is cut off a little bit, the light doesn't shine as how it should. So our Christian attitude, if we compare it to that diamond, it has to shine. It has to be even. It has to be symmetrical, front and back and to the sides. Because if it's not even in our attitude, then the light that we're trying to shine doesn't shine as bright because our conduct is the end result of our attitude. And our thinking, because of our attitude, will show itself in our actions and our conduct. If you have your Bible, please turn to um, our first verse that I want to share with you is in Philippians chapters 2. Philippians chapters 2, verses um, 12 through 15. Now, about a couple of weeks back, a friend of mine during my weekly um, Bible study with uh, the other Leaf um, brothers on, in our Zoom meeting, he told me to read this. So let me read it for you. So Philippians chapters 2, verses 12. It says, Therefore, my dear friends, just as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but even more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his great purpose. Do, not, do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverse, perverted generation, amongst whom you shine like a star in the world. You know, I've heard this verse so many times, I have, and it didn't really get to me until my friend told me to, or asked me to read it in our Bible study. 
and it hit me so hard. You know how we always say iron sharpens iron, you know. Lately, my iron is not straight. It's crooked. It's bent. It's like when you're cutting grass and your lawnmower blade hits a big rock. That blade bends. And, you know, to sharpen that bent blade that's been bent so bad by that rock, you can't just take a file and start following. No, no, no. You got to go to the garage and get a hammer, a big hammer. And God went and got this big hammer of conviction. And he pounded on my soul. Only then was it straightened enough to be filed back, to be sharp again. Because lately my light hasn't been shining bright. It has not, has not. At work, you know, I just moved into a new clinic, new, new staff. Uh, my, my nurse was off on, on surgical leave, and I wasn't the same at work as I am here. I wear two hats. When, I, when you guys see me, I wear this Dr. Chance, Brother Chance, nice, respectable, well-spoken guy. But at work, I put on this hat, which I don't want to, but sometimes I do. I'm grumpy. I'm agitated. I'm like a pain in their butt. Christian trying to witness to God. Could you imagine? Any of you guys out there have this problem of sometimes we ha- we're wearing two hats. And sometimes we don't mean to do that. Some, sometimes we blame it on, on, on our environment. We blame it on, on people that we encounter. But the verse that we just read in Philippians chapters 2, verses 12 through 15, it's saying we should be the same in the presence or in his absence. We should do everything that we can to, to make our light shine. Lately, I wasn't shining like I should. Ever realize why is it sometimes we, we show our best Christian attitude to our fellow brothers and sisters, but we have a hard time showing our Christ-like attitude to our fellow non-believers outside this church or outside your church. Sometimes we don't think about it, but we do. We, we sometimes are not cognitive or cognizant of, of what we're doing. But we are called to shine here and even more out there for Christ. Because Paul is saying is how we conduct ourselves will determine what they see of Christ. So if you have your Bible, now please turn to our main verse. is in uh, Philippians chapters 2, verses 3 to 11. And this is the verse that I wanted to focus on tonight. Philippians chapters 2, verses 3 to 11. Do nothing out of selfish ambitions or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourself. Everyone should look out, for, out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Adopt the same attitude as Christ Jesus, who exists in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as, some, as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself to becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalts him and gave him the name that is above all, that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, Paul, in in this verse, he is instructing us to conduct ourselves mentally in our attitude and physically in our actions in the manner that is worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
you know, in, in the Army, they, they, they have what's called Article 133. You heard this before in TV shows and stuff. When somebody is a, a military officer or something, but his conduct is unbecoming. So they go, they, 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 they go to court, and they get penalized for not becoming an officer. How much more is it being a Christian, and our conduct does not justify the gospel of Christ? So he's saying here is, therefore, because your conduct matters, because it testifies to the world who you are and who you serve, and it also verifies that the Holy Spirit is in you, and it also means that your conduct will either bring people to God to know Christ or people to run away from Christ because of you. And, and that's the heart of the message today is, is humility, being humble. Pastor Lao is, is Tom Long, Tom Jai. Now, if you think about humility, Tom Jai, Tom Long, it's a very hard pill to swallow. It's not, it's not sweet. It's, it's hard to swallow. And I know because I'm up here pouring my heart and soul out because I struggle with this problem. But it's the pride and selfishness of our, our heart is the root of the problem that we have in our Christian walk with God. So Paul, he's telling us in the verse that we just read to follow the greatest example that has ever shown how to be humble. And that is to follow what Jesus did. But to, full, to, 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 full, uh, to fully understand this, let's break the verse that we just read up into three main parts, right? The first part is, is the command, the, the, the charge that Paul is telling us to do. And that's in verses 3 to 4. So let me just read, read that again. First, uh, verse 3 to 4. It says, do, not, do nothing out of selfish ambitions or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important as yourself. Everyone should look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. And this charge, this command that Paul is telling us, it's, he's forbidding us for, from, from considering ourself, our concerns, as the, the central focus. But instead, we are to look for the interests of others. Instead, we are supposed to be humble, treating others more important than ourselves. And that's hard to swallow. Think about it. Treating somebody better than you treat yourself. Not less than yourself. No, no, no. Not equal to yourself, but better than yourself. And where does this, this, this humility start? Where does it start? Is it after we're uh, vindicated? After we're, we're, we're validated? Or after we are proven right? When are we going to long? After quite, 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 too. Quite, 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 When does it start? No, no, I think it starts when our relationship with God, we humble ourselves to him. We show our humility to him. Because when we humble ourselves before God, that will lead us to humble ourselves before man. And here's why it's so important. Here's why it's so important. First uh, Peter, if you look at First Peter, chapters 5. Peter is saying this. He's saying in, in verse 6, chapter 5, verse 6 in 1 Peter. He says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you at the proper time. Humble ourselves before God. Because God, he opposes the proud, but he give grace to the humble. And, you know, back to our main verse in uh, 
verse 4 in, back in Philippians chapters 2. We are not to be looking out for our own interests, but, but the interests of other people. And this means is that we aren't supposed to focus on self. Self is too, too centered for, on, on us. We are, we are supposed to focus our concern on others. Because the world would make us think that our attitude should be this, should be, what is it in it for me? What are you going to give me if I do this for you, right? And what more can I get from you? Because it's not an even trade. I want more from you. People write books on negotiation, right? In business, when you negotiate, your thinking is, how can I up you? If I can't up you, we'll come to an agreement. But there's no way I'm going to be less than you. So one person wants to up the other one. The other wants to up the other one. There is no coming down. That's the world's attitude on, on being humble, right? And, and if, if you, um, you know, speaking of, of, of attitude on being humble, let me share you with you a, a funny true story that happened to me. When I was in college, my mom had a friend who has a cute little daughter, so she tries to set me up with this little girl. Or more than likely expected more me to pay or something. You know what I did? I said, oh, um, let me go to the bathroom. So I told her I was going to go to the bathroom. I walked, didn't go to the bathroom. I went to the back door. Then I just picked up and went home. Because my attitude is, what are you going to give me if I do this for you? What is it in it for me? That it was my, 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 worldly, pers- my worldly attitude. And I share that because I then want to compare that with something that happened about three weeks ago or so. I met up a friend that um, came for a funeral. So, you know, I called this brother up. He said, hey, let's, let's meet for, for lunch at the photo place. So then, we, you know, I went there early, and then I was going to, and then I went up to the waitress who had my table. I said, hey, here's my credit card. These people are mine. There's about eight people so but put it all on my credit card because I told him that I was going to pay for it. So when I, I sat there, and here he comes, and then we talked, and we were waiting for our guests. But then here comes other people. More people came from the funeral, of course. And then next thing you know, this restaurant was full of people that, you know. And I thought to myself, hmm, deja vu. I've seen this before. But this brother, this godly brother, got up and walked to the cashier, and he, without nobody knowing, he paid for everybody, and he even gave me the the respect to let me take care of my little table. Now, and, and of course, I'm not trying to lift this guy up, no. What I'm trying to show you is the heart of this guy. And, and, you know, you could argue and say, oh, you know, Chance, when you're in college, you have no money, this guy has money, even if I had the money, even if you had the money, you would probably think twice, right? Be honest. But this, this, this brother got up and did what he did without nobody knowing. But more importantly, this is me observing this brother. And it kind of wowed me. It's like, wow, this brother, that's a godly brother. Now imagine if a non-believer witness this, what would they think? They would think, my goodness, what is this guy drinking? I want this guy's Kool-Aid. What is in his Kool-Aid? They would then want to know why he's like this. They want to know where is this Jesus? How can I get more of this Jesus that you have? And that's the witness. That's the light that this brother was shining. And here's the question. Where did he get all of that? Where did he learn that from? is the next part of this, and that's in verse 5 to 8. And the next part of this verse is 5 through 8, and that's the example that, that, that Paul wants us to know, right? Let me read that again to you, too. Paul, he's saying, 
for us to adopt the same attitude as that of Jesus Christ, who, existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as someone to be exploited, as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself to becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. So this brother at this pho restaurant uh, imitated that. He learned from that example. Now, it's important that we understand this part. This is very important. And and it focuses us on um, verse 6. If we look at verse 6, I like this. On a different translation, verse 6 says that though he is God, he did not hold on. He did not think of equality with God as something to cling on, to hold on. It's important that we understand that this verse is saying that Jesus Christ is God. But, but he decided, he decided to step aside all this glory, all of this splendor of, become, of, of being a God. He says, you know, I'm letting that go. I'm going to empty myself. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a man. I'm going to leave all of that splendor behind, but I am still God. That's what we need to understand. He left all of that splendor, but he is still God to become who he is in the form of Jesus Christ. He emptied himself. He gave it all up to be a servant, to be obedient. He willingly set that aside. He set that aside. The splendor, the mighty, the glory of God. He set that aside, but he is still God to become a servant, obedient even to death. Now, because he became a man, he had to be obedient to the law, right? He obeyed it to the point of death. And he subjected himself to to torture, a torture that is long, lingering, shameful, only fitting for a a, a criminal, but a God willingly took that shame for you and me. That's why we should never boast. That's why you don't walk around like, um, who's that boxer? Um, Colin McGregor. McGregor. Before this guy fights, he he walks like this. Humble. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Don't brag on how good you are because you can never compare to this. Don't think that you're going to do good things than serve God because you cannot do anything better than this. Or in Arkansas, we say gooder than this. You can't. So humble yourself. And the last part of this is, is the last part is the result of what happens when you humble yourself. And that's in verse 9 and and, and 11. Let me read that too. It says, For this reason God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above all every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to glorify to the glory of God the Father. Now, this is beautifully written. If you think about 5 and 8 and 9 and 11, 5 and 8 talks about the the main subject is Jesus, right? Whereas 9 and 11, the main subject is God the Father, 
right? So five and eight, Jesus did his part. He humbled himself. Nine and 11, God the Father did his part, and he exalted, lift up Jesus Christ. And God the Father can do the same with us too. If we do our part and humble ourselves, and he will then exalt us. Jesus Christ is the ultimate example of what it is like to have an attitude of humility. If the Son of God can do this, can set aside all that glory to become a man and to die on a shameful cross, then he, we, we should try to do the same, right? So what, what, what does all this mean to us? What does all of this mean? And what, what does it look like when we humble ourselves? What's the take-home message? First, first, I would say is being humble like Jesus means putting others first. Plain and simple. Put others first. Again, this could be hard to swallow because that's how we are, humans. You know, Mark Twain, the famous uh, American writer, he said this, and I'm paraphrasing, of course. He says this. He says that, you know, it's not the, 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 the hard things or, or the difficult things of the Bible that I have problems with. It's actually the, the, the part that I understand that I have problems with because I can never live up to those things. And we understand this. We read this. We understand that to be humble like Jesus Put others first. That is so easy, but we have a hard time with it. We always think to ourselves, what about me? Quite quite We can all relate to this. And it's going to be hard if you do it in your own power, though. It will be hard if you focus on yourself. You focus only on your interest. But if you focus on God and in God, then you're called to a different standard. But with the Christ-like attitude, we can do this. Not a Christian-like attitude, because we know that there are some Christians that don't shine because they don't have a Christ-like attitude. They have a Christian attitude. And Christian attitude can be faulty if their priority is on themselves and not putting others first. Once we're in Jesus and of Jesus, and once we're saved, it shouldn't be about us anymore. It shouldn't be about what we want. It's what he wants. And what he wants is for us to be like him, which is to put others first. So being humble like Jesus means puts other people first. And second, second is that being humble like Jesus means letting go. Letting go. Let it go. Now, letting go is something that's hard to do also, right? We have a tendency to hold on, to cling to. But what Jesus did was he let go. Verse 6, although he is God, he set aside that splendor, that majestic splendor, that glory of what it means to be God. He let all that go for, for the shame of being on the cross. But the thing is, he is still God. You, me, if we let it go, mikiet, pride, if we let that go, we are still children of God. 
We are still his servants. He still loves us. So if you want to be humble, let go of your... Let, 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 let it go. Be a git, whatever. We tend to, oh, see it not. Yan see it not. Can see it not. You are still God's child. He's still your God. Because quite Lao, Lao's people and Asian people, they'll die by their face. See it not. If you lose your face, you will still have, and you are still God's child. So let go. Let go. If he let that go to be there, he's still God, but he let it go. We should let go of whatever honor you have in, in, in your life. If we let that go, we get his honor. Like what God the Father did to Jesus. He let go and God the Father exalts his name above all names. In heaven, earth, and under the earth. In conclusion, and I'll close with this, I I just hope that we kind of get a better understanding of being humble, how it's like being humble, like that of Jesus Christ. So we as Christians have to conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel. It's like that Article 133 that the military uses, the conduct of becoming a Christian. And, 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 and like our diamond, our example of a diamond, our attitude, our thinking should reflect the light. It should also refract the light. And as a result, the, the, the light that's refracted is going to bounce inside us, goes up and out of this heart of ours. That's the dispersion, the action. And we also have to be cut Our facets must be cut equally, evenly, symmetrical, whether we're here or we're out there. Whether your nurse is gone because she has surgery or you you have tons of work, you have to be a Christian here as you are in your office, Brother Chance. In school, in your gardens, if you're retired. On Monday, as it is on Wednesday and Sunday. Because this world is dark. It's dark without the light of Jesus Christ. It's dark. The attitude of the world is, what is it in, what is it, in it for me? But the attitude of Jesus Christ is, their, other people's interest is more important than my interest. Now, let me ask you guys this. Who are here? And, and, and you, brothers and sisters out there as well. How many of you guys, raise, raise your hand, do you feel that, that your life is so blessed with what you have right now? I am. Today, I'm 45 years old. I am so blessed with what I have that he's given me. And I'm also grateful that I did not get what I deserve. I am so grateful because of his mercy. And why? Why did this all happen to me? It's because Jesus Christ put his interest above mine. I mean, Jesus Christ took my interest above his. He let go of that splendor as a God, but he is still my God. He became a servant who died on the cross for my sin. That's humble. So I want to go back and read our, verse, our, our, our first um, ver, uh, scripture in Phil, uh, Philippians chapters 2, verses 12 to 15. But I'm going to ask... Uh, Sister Brittany here to reread it. Because she's going to read it better than me. Go ahead, Sister. 
Therefore, my dear friends, just as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but even more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling and arguing, so that you may be blameless and pure, children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation among whom you shine like stars in the world. We are called to shine. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you. We're called to shine. So now, not only in my presence, but even more, even more in my absence. It's real nice for us to act Christian-like to one another, but I think God would want us to witness even more to the non-believers out there that, that needs to see this light out there. Amen, my friends? Let's, let's all rise. And thank you so much, uh, my friends out there, for tuning in um, to our service. And if you are watching, and if you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart, will you pray with me to receive Jesus Christ in your heart? And if you are a Christian, and if you're struggling just like me, that your light isn't as brilliant as it should be. Confess. Humble yourself. Like the example that, that, that Christ humbled him. So let's, let's, let's close our eyes. Dear Father God, Father God, thank you so much, Father, for today. Thank you for giving me an opportunity, Father, to share in your word to highlight your son, Jesus Christ, to highlight what he's done for us on the cross, to highlight his humble heart and what it's like to be just like your son. We always tell ourselves, how can I be more like Jesus? And we now know that putting ourselves behind those, putting others first, and to accept you, Father, as our Lord and Savior. And if those who are watching, and I'm praying this prayer to a, a friend of mine, a brother, we grew up together, and he knows I'm talking about him. And I'm praying for you, my friend, for God to, to um, reach into your heart, to squeeze your heart, to break down the wall. And I'm praying this for other people out there too that, that does not know Jesus, that, that is needing this light. And I pray that um, the walls are broken. And I pray that the love of God will radiate and shine in, in, in the darkness that you're in. And my friend, I love you. That's why I'm, I'm praying this, pray, the, 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 this prayer for you. And I pray that brothers out there and sisters out there that are struggling with their light, and I pray for, for humility in our walks with Christ. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.